Today's project is an Ikegana water bowl. Ikebana is the Japanese art of flower arrangement. It is a creative expression of harmony between humans and nature. Ikebana arrangements are composed of flowers, branches, leaves, and other natural materials. And the goal is to create a beautiful balanced composition. The practice has its root in Buddhism and is believed to be a spiritual practice that brings peace and balance to its practitioners. One of Ikebana practices sees beauty in the spatial void. The practitioner doesn't have to fill the space with flowers. Space has a role of complementing the existence of the flowers. That is, less is more. In this concept, the water bowl has an interesting position. I want to make a water bowl which fits into this role. I use 1.5 kg buff stoneware clay which contains 10% lava clay on a full-size throwing bat. I need to anchor both my arms strongly on the wheel tray, then lean forward to put my body weight onto my hands. In this way, centering becomes easier. If I only use the power of my arms, I get tired very quickly. When I hold the clay to make a cone shape, my hands are vertically, slightly offset. My left hand is higher than my right hand. This has a mechanical reason. My hands are making a primitive screw shape so the clay can go up naturally. When I press the cone down, I use the edge of my right palm. This is the most comfortable part of the hand to use for powerful work. I can send my body weight through my well-anchored elbows. Now I'm going to make a large flat disc. I slide my right palm from top center downwards. I also shift the connection point between the palm and the clay from the top part of the palm to the bottom. Now the clay is becoming more disc shape, so my right hand movement is sideways. Both my thumbs are interlocked. So my well-anchored right elbow and thumbs give good steadiness to my right hand movement. My left middle and ring fingers are controlling the edge to make a round shape. Now the clay disc is too large to use the interlocked thumb technique. So to keep my right hand steady, I hold my right fingers tightly with my left hand. Then quickly check the size with my hands. It is around 25 centimeter. I'm making the center hole and leaving one centimeter thickness at the bottom. I want to make a foot ring for this water bowl. Now I'm putting the clay in a 5 o'clock direction until I nearly reach the end. When the clay start to climb up, I quickly press it down with my right little finger. 
This pot is called a sui ban, which means water dish. The appearance of the water dish is important, as it contributes to the overall look of the ikebana arrangement. So it is important to choose a water dish that complements the flowers and the environment in which they will be displayed in terms of color, shape, and size. As I am a potter, I have the great advantage of appreciating the path of an ikebana from the beginning to the end. Even if you are not an ikebana practitioner, this suiban will change your aesthetic sense for daily flower arrangement. I'm compressing the bottom. This bowl has very wide flat surface, so it is the best to compress it well to avoid an S crack. When I'm near the end, my left index finger is behind the wooden spatula and taking care that the newly accumulated clay doesn't trap air inside. Now I'm putting the wall up. This is the same as usual practice. My right ring finger is a key point, and from there, two fingers are lined up to make a straight line to bring the clay up. Then my left thumb is attached to my right thumb to connect both hands. When I'm making, I don't think about the roles of individual body parts anymore. But when I analyze it, I can see logical patterns. This is the last stretch with a spatula when I can make the wall very thin without throwing marks. I'm compressing the top from three directions to make a strong edge. I'm marking the point where I want to push out. Then the left middle finger is slowly pushing out that point and my right middle finger is pushing in the upper part. My image is the edge of the pond in the forest. The land is overhanging the water. So I want to push the middle part out, then fold the top part to create my image. I clean the surface with a wooden spatula and this time I make a clear folding line. This is the end of throwing. I compress the edge with a chamois leather. Then cut the bottom guide for the strings to cut. I want to make an irregularity which will give tenderness to the ball. One finger stays at one point and the other finger pulls out the clay in the opposite direction. Then I push the twisted part goes back to a circle. This ball has a delicate edge, so I use a chuck for the trimming. First of all, I assess the thickness of the ball. I threw the top part thin enough so I don't trim that part. I want to have a good height, but small footing, 
which will give a floating light feeling to the ball. I mark the line where I trim the clay. Then I make the outside footring line. The last one is the inside of the footring line. I use a milk carton cap to spread the finger pressure on the center. This saw form is very useful for taking chunks of clay. You can buy them at DIY shops. I'm going to take the clay up to the first line. I'm going to use these handmade trimming tools to make the foot rings. Both of them are made from broken umbrellas. One side of the ready-made trimming tool's wire was worn out, so I replaced it with some umbrella wire. I must say, these are very good. I take the outside of the foot ring straight down. I check the thickness. Now I'm trimming the inside of the foot ring. This is a wide flat area, so I trim circles first, then take the circles peak off. In this way, I can avoid getting a wavy surface which sometimes occurs when I trim a large flat surface. I repeat this until the internal footring level matches the external one. My right middle and ring fingers are controlling the tool. They are very close to the end of the tool to maximize the control. My left hand is assisting the right hand steadiness. At the same time, it is feeling the ball's position. I finalize the footring thickness. Lastly, I take the outside corner off to match the internal curve. 